Hi guys, hello, how's everybody doing? Tuesday evening, it's so good to be back home in my little uh, office space. And as you can tell, I'm back home. Uh, I have to say thank you guys so much for all the well wishes and thoughts and everything for my mom. She's definitely better now. She is. Um, she was discharged and then ended up back in the ER. Um, and so it's just, it was a little roller coaster, but in any case, she got discharged and she's better. And I brought her back with me because I really do need to get a bunch of just testing and she has to see a bunch of specialists and things like that. So I ended up coming back home and brought her back with me. And so I've just been really tied up with kind of having her do all her doctor appointments here and see all the specialists and just kind of figure out what's going on. So I have to say thank you so much for everybody that commented and, and sent support my way. I really appreciate it. Um, and so I wanted to get to the questions today. We only have three questions, so I wanted to address all of them. Um, as always, this is not to be substituted for medical advice. This is an educational group where I try to educate people um, on healing from chronic illness and leading a long and healthy and pain-free life based on my experiences of my long and arduous journey. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go back and watch the lives, please do so. Please go back and watch the lives. They're pinned to the top of the page and you can watch from the very first one. It'll kind of explain my whole journey, um, how I went through a lot and then I was, you know, how I went through it and how I dealt with it and how I came out of it and my entire healing journey. So again, this is just a disclaimer. This is not to be substituted for medical advice. You have to be working with a practitioner um, to get the proper advice for you. Um, but these are just general um, questions that I can address based on my experience and um, education and things like that. So um, take a minute to go watch the lives if you haven't already done that. Um, I think they're pretty helpful and supportive for people going through this journey. I am so thankful to this group, just growing leaps and bounds. I really, really hope that each and every one of you is getting something out of being in this group, whether it's some support, whether it's some healing, whether it's some you know emotional healing, whether it's having some questions answered or getting educated on something. I hope you're just getting so much out of this group. And I really do hope that you guys will continue asking questions, um, make the most of this group. Please let me know in your comments below if you've um, you know, gotten some help from this group and how it's helped you and things like that. I'd love to read those comments and, and um, you know, just move us forward to continue helping everybody to heal from such difficult and chronic diseases. Um, and I think, as most of you already know, I had uh, written a 10-step guide to heal from chronic illness. Um, and so that's also, I believe, pinned to the top of the page. So, you know, feel free to look at that guide. If you are a newbie and just joining the group, you want to see what the steps I used um, to start healing myself. And quite honestly, these are the steps that I still use till this day. Um, just a lot more advanced and, and I don't have to do all of those 10 steps, but uh, a lot more advanced um, levels than where I was back when I was really, really sick. So um, all of it is in there and let's get started with the questions. So the first question was from Sue and Sue said, I would like to know more about the continuous glucose monitor that you use. How does it work? Is it a prescription needed to purchase one? And could you recommend what to look for when purchasing one? Thanks so much. So that is a really great question. And actually my sensor just expired um, a day ago. So I don't have one on right now. I just got back and I've just been a little crazy, but I don't have one on right now. Otherwise I would show it to you guys. Um, uh, for those of you that have not seen my posts, I wear a continuous glucose monitor for biohacking reasons. I am not a diabetic. Um, thankfully, my um, fasting sugars have always been fantastic, and my fasting glucose um, was 
kind of bad when I was ill. Um, and then now in the last couple of years, it's been fantastic again. So I wear one for biohacking reasons because I have found for myself a direct correlation between spikes in my blood sugar or drops in my blood sugar. And I have found a direct correlation between that um, and how I feel, my adrenal fatigue and all of that. So um, if you haven't already seen on the group, go back and see some of the posts that I've made about keeping your blood sugar balanced and how that is the number one key to healing um, from chronic illnesses and to feel better. Uh, but just in general, I did a talk a few months ago about how insulin resistance is the cause of eight of the most common diseases, including diabetes, cardiovascular disease, PCOS, um, dementia, Alzheimer's. Um, there's so many di diabetes. I think I already said that. Um, so insulin is one of the leading causes for all of these diseases. And so I wear one just because I needed to see where I was feeling worse and feeling better. Um, but if you don't know your fasting glucose, your fasting insulin, these are tests that you definitely have, need to have your practitioner do. Um, and if you go back and watch some of the previous lives, I've talked about what the difference is between fasting glucose and fasting insulin and how it's so critical what your fasting insulin is um, and why. And so you can find that in some of the previous lives. But um, having said that, to answer Sue's question, so I kept my box right here just so you guys can see it. The one I use is called um, Free Libre. Um, and that, I'm going to put it right here if you guys can see it. It's Freestyle Libre. Um, that's the one I use. Now, this one is covered by insurance. Uh, a certain amount, but it you do need a prescription for it. Um, and I want to say... I think I pay 30 bucks a month or something for two of these units. So two 14 day supplies. So they last me a month. Um, the rest is covered by my insurance. And I, I think they use a discount card at the pharmacy. So Freestyle Libre is the one that I use. Um, it's pretty simple. There's videos on YouTube about it. You know, you have to alcohol the area first and then you um, connect the two um, like the portion of the sensor with the clicker, and then you just click it on. It's almost like stapling um, your skin. And to be honest, I mean, the, the filament that's in there that goes into your skin is about the thickness of a hair strand. So it's really not too bad, maybe a little bit thicker than a hair strand. So it's really not too bad. It's not painful. You do feel, feel a little, you know, just a little ping in the beginning when you put it in, but that's it. After that, you don't know anything about it. So when I first started, I used to put it on the back of my arm, which is, I think, a good spot, especially at the tricep area. Um, that's where I used to put it initially. And I would just get a lot of attention and people are like, what is that? What is that? And they're like, well, you're not a diabetic. Why do you wear it? Um, and I got tired of explaining to people, you know, I was doing it for biohacking reasons and to really keep myself and my health in optimal condition. Um, and so then I started wearing it kind of on my torso, right to the right of right or left of my belly button, um, kind of in that area is where I started wearing it. Um, so Freestyle Libre is the one that I use um, just because of ease with my doctor prescribing it, my insurance, you know, things like that. That's the one I use. And um, my, my fruit, few of my friends and family members, they use another one. It's called Dexacom. Um, Dexcom or Dexacom, uh, D-E-X-C-O-M, Dexcom, um, is the one they use. The beauty of the Dexcom, um, and I have the Freestyle Libre, which is the one, like the one of the first ones, so it's 1.0. There's another 2.0 one as well, which I think has more advanced settings, but I never really needed it just because I usually just use it, you know, to monitor my blood sugar level. Um, but Dexcom, what's good about it is that it's continuous monitoring. So my problem is that if I don't scan every, you know, six to eight hours, I lose um, about 12 hours of data. So I have to scan it every few hours um, to just make sure that I don't lose or have a gap in my data. Um, the Dexcom one is really good because it just continuously is measuring your blood sugar. So whenever you look at it on your phone, it'll give you an update of your levels, you know, for the last whatever, 24 hours, 48 hours, like there's no gaps in between. So that's really good about the Dexcom. Um, 
The other brand um, that I have heard and read all a lot about, um, if you guys follow Dr. Casey Means, um, she is one of the co-founders of another kind of, um, uh, of a CGM, Continuous Glucose Monitor. It's called Levels, L-E-V-E-L-S. Um, I know like last year they had like 100,000 people waiting list um, just because it's so popular and levels I believe you can get without a prescription um, and I know that the most recent levels um, you know version that they have out also does continuous monitoring so you don't have a break in your numbers so levels can be um, uh, gotten without a prescription and you just go to their website and I think you have to put in your name and they have availability and things like that. I do think, I remember looking at it last year, I do think it's a little bit more expensive um, and there's a membership plan. I, I wanna say it's like 200 bucks a year for the membership plus um, the actual you know, monitor itself. Um, so I think it's a little bit more expensive. You know, For me, I started um, a few years ago on the Freestyle Libre, so I'm actually very happy and comfortable with it. Um, but Levels is really good too because they send you a newsletter and then they will, I think there's someone that will kind of help you decipher your results and it'll send you, you know, kind of like a summary, like when you ate grapes, this is what happened. And when you ate cheese and healthy fats, this is what happened. So I think they kind of help you um, along the way with this stuff. So, um, so check out Freestyle Libre. Um, Dexcom or um, Levels. And like I said, the Freestyle Libre and the Dexcom, I think you, I'm 100% sure you need a uh, prescription for those, but I think Levels you can get without a prescription. Um, and so let me just make sure I have answered all your questions. So how does it work? So basically that little filament um, that goes into your skin monitors your uh, blood glucose level at all times. Um, and basically, if you eat a meal, um, it'll show you if your sugar is spiking and how does it you know, drop after that, things like that. So I'm really bummed out because literally yesterday or day before yesterday, when I was flying back, I wrote up a whole post and I posted uh, a couple of screenshots to show you guys um, last week when I was, I think it was last to last week, when I um, had a little bit of a late night, I was at a friend's house, I didn't get my usual dinner, which was a pretty, you know, good sized dinner that I usually eat a lot of like proteins and healthy carbs and, and fats and things like that in my dinner. And then um, sometimes I'll have some nuts around 7 or 7.30 p.m. just to keep my blood sugar levels even through the night. I was at a friend's house, I had a late dinner, they, um, I, when I was eating over there, it wasn't like a very well balanced meal. Um, and so around one o'clock I woke up with like a jolt, like something woke me up. And first I just, you know, looked at, look, I got out of bed and I just looked cause I thought one of my kids was there, but no one was there. Um, and then I like lay there thinking, did I hear a sound? Like usually if there's a sound, you know, I, I'm a light sleeper, I'll hear it. So I was like, did I hear a sound? But there was no sound. And I just laid there. I'm like, what just woke me up like that? And then something just said, oh, wait, let me check my blood sugar. So I took my phone and you you have to put it next to the sensor. Like it'll, you have to just say check glucose on the app. And then you put it, you know, next to the sensor. And sure enough, my blood sugar had fallen in the red zones like it was in the 60s. And so what had happened is my blood sugar levels fell and your body naturally produces cortisol because it's preventing your body from going into a hypoglycemia type situation and, you know, potentially becoming a, a, a troublesome you know, problem for you. So your body produces all this cortisol, which then will bump up your um, glucose stores and provide glucose to your body for all the processes that it needs at night. So I had put screenshots of that night at one, I think it was like 1 10 AM where I had taken my glucose and you'll see that it's in the red zone, a little dip, it's like just a little dip. And then it came right back up. Um, and so this is where I feel, and I've always said on the group, how important it is to keep your blood sugar levels throughout the day, but especially through the night, if you want to sleep well, um, 
especially through the night. And during the day too, if you prevent these really high spikes by not eating very sugary pasta, you know, flours and things like that and have it not spike up and then come crashing down because then you're going to feel terrible. Um, those are, you know, the, the reasons why I always say you have to keep your blood sugar levels steady. Plus, then that just minimizes how much cortisol your body's producing. And I was just surprised that, you know, I always try to eat very healthy for the whole day, but especially dinner. And then I usually will try to eat some nuts or something, you know, around 7, 7.30 p.m. or something. And I didn't get to do that that day and how quickly my blood sugar levels drop through the night. So um, definitely just something to know. That's how it works. It kind of measures your blood sugar level. I'll try to make the post again. I'd written a bunch of stuff. I'd compared um, some screenshots of when my blood sugar level had dropped that night to a night where I had a steady night of sleep. Um, because my blood sugar levels stayed even um, and that kind of stuff. So it's very, very important, especially if you're trying to heal from adrenal fatigue, you know, any chronic illnesses, mold and inflammation and hormonal imbalance and things like that. It is absolutely important to keep your blood sugar levels steady. And that's kind of why I wear one. Um, we can do a whole class on this if you guys are interested on how to keep your blood sugar levels steady, what to eat you know, what um, balances your blood sugar level, tricks that you can do uh, to keep your blood sugar level balanced, what you should eat, eat first, in which order. That's a whole science. And I know I've talked a little bit about it um, before in some of the lives, but, you know, that's a whole science behind it. And so um, we can always dive deep into that if that's something you're interested in. But anyways, I hope that answers your question, Sue, about, um, you know, what it is and how it does and, and how it works and things like that. Um, Georgie says, I stopped taking digestive enzymes for a week and felt good, but noticed I got super blocked up and bloated and had aches and pains all through my muscles. I have SIBO, but I guess the issue is from low stomach acid. Taking digestive enzymes for years is expensive. How can I use apple cider vinegar as a replacement and will healing SIBO naturally improve stomach acid? when you had it. Yeah. So I did have SIBO and I ended up having to get on the treatment protocol for SIBO. Um, I can't say, unfortunately, that I felt so much better before or after the treatment. Um, and I unfortunately did not get retested again for SIBO because really mine wasn't that severe and I didn't have the methane producing one. I just had like one version. I think it was like the hydrogen producing one, which is not as bad as the methane producing one um, and things like that. And so I, you know, never got retested again after that. I don't know if I felt so differently after that, but um, I did go through the treatment and it says you could do it naturally or you could do uh, antibiotics and things like that. Um, I do want to answer your question, though, about your digestive enzymes. I can't remember, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, Georgie, if you asked the same question in another group, and I think I had answered it. If not, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. Um, but there's a couple of places that you can start. So most digestive enzymes, especially the ones that I use, um, from the company that I have told you guys, you know, Global Healing, the ones I use, a lot of them are made from very natural, um, you know, fruits and, and vegetables and things like that. So papaya is one of the best um, fruits to eat that has the most amount of digestive enzymes. I remember when we were very, very little and my mom was a teacher and every other day she would make us eat um, papaya and she would always you know make fun of it and telling us how good we would go to the bathroom um and because my mom's very ayurvedic and i come from a very ayurvedic background like home and so it's so funny because my mom doesn't have any medical background but just to he hear this today now in the functional medicine world and the naturopathic world of how papaya is really good as a digestive enzyme to help with constipation things like that so what i did in the beginning, because I was really sick and very sensitive, um, I just started with papaya. Um, just having papaya almost every day or every other day, first thing in the morning. It's really, really helpful to help, you know, with digestive enzymes, to help with constipation, which sounds like you're saying you're getting blocked up if you don't have that. So that was where I started. Um, and I used to do a little bit of celery juice as well. Then, as I started getting a little bit better, 
I started doing the seeds. So the black seeds of the papaya are actually very, very strong. Um, they taste very bitter, but they have the most amount of digestive enzymes in them. They help with digestion. So I used to take like spoonfuls of it and just put it in my smoothie. Um, and that's really helpful too. So just having papaya um, when you can tolerate it and then papaya seeds, which are a little bit stronger, you wanna be careful. Um, and those are actually really good is what I started with. And it helped me a lot um, because yeah, it can get expensive um, to have digestive enzymes for so long. So those are really good things. And then the other thing is like bromelain, like the digestive enzymes that I use, which is Veganzyme from Global Healing. I've, I've, um, I've put in the link for you guys a couple of times. Um, I, um, I use them and that has bromelain in it as well. Bromelain is an extract from pineapple. Um, and so pineapple is another good um, fruit that you can have to help with digestive purposes. Um, and so then, you know, like bromelain, I now just, now I just take bromelain as a capsule form because I can tolerate all these supplements, but bromelain really helps with aches and pains. Um, and so that's what I take it for because I'm really active now and I'm working out a lot. Um, and I don't like to constantly have aches and pains. And so that's what I take bromelain for. Um, but I know it also helps with the digestive portion of things. So, um, definitely worth looking into papaya and papaya seeds and, um, bromelain if you can um, as alternatives but look up vegan enzyme it's I think it's one of the cleanest purest um, um, you know enzymes out there digestive enzymes and it's vegan and it's made from natural plants and fruits and um, it's just something that I really like I'll put a link in the end um, for vegan enzyme that I use so hopefully that helps um, how you can use apple cider vinegar as a replacement um, I can't say I know too, too much about apple cider vinegar, but I have used it a lot. Um, there was a four year period that I was drinking it every single morning. Um, and so the way people use apple cider vinegar, they use it more to balance their blood sugar. So if you have apple cider vinegar in maybe half an hour before a meal, it really helps balance your blood sugar out. So that's one of the main purposes, but I know that it has a lot of enzymes in the apple cider vinegar that do help with digestion. I used to just drink it once a day, first thing in the morning. Um, for four years, I just you know would do a shot of apple cider vinegar and drink it first thing in the morning. I used to take a shot and then I used to put a bunch of warm water in it. And then you gotta sip it with a straw because you don't want it to um, corrode your teeth away. Um, and so that was always my morning routine for about four years where I just um, would have apple cider vinegar in the morning. I haven't done it in a few years now. I still do lemon water. Um, for the last three years, I think I've been doing lemon water with just Himalayan salt in the morning. That's my little adrenal cocktail with just a few splashes of um, cream of tartar. That's more of my adrenal cocktail um, that I think helps my adrenals a lot. Um, but as far as digestive enzymes are concerned, those are all really helpful. And then just a lot of fiber. Um, I eat a very fiber-rich diet because I know it helps me, you know, keeps me moving. And fiber, really plant, um, you know, components and fiber really do help with the digestive process as well. Um, and so that really is, you know, something good that you can do as well. So I hope that answers your question. Um, there's a few different alternatives. Um, the other thing Georgie asked is also, I've just gotten off the pill after seven years and my hormones are a bit wild adjusting. How long should I wait to get my hormones tested again to know they are my natural real hormones after they settle back down to normal after the pill? So that one, Georgie, um, is, is a little bit of a tough question because people say, you know, doctors and practitioners and, and stuff, well, they'll say that you need to be off hormones at least for three weeks to get your hormone levels tested. However, I think it takes at least three months to get all synthetic hormones out of your system, sometimes even four months, so anywhere from three to four months, to have your body start naturally producing um, hormones again and where you can be accurately um, sure it's your own body. So um, three weeks to really get tested. If you're going to do any kind of testing, you have to be off hormones completely for about three weeks. But... I think anywhere from three months to four months to really get an accurate picture of what your own um, body is producing. Um, and I know that there was a period that I was off for a while, even recently, but even before. So I use um, the Women's Hormone Balance 
that um, I feel is really helpful for me um, as far as balancing my hormones. It's got like wild yam extract and it's got ashwagandha and it's got maca root and stuff in it to really help because I think I told you guys I was off hormones for about four months. Um, really didn't feel great on it and my body was producing a really good amount but just not a good amount that I was feeling good on it. Um, and so I feel that for me, the women's hormone balance from um, Global Healing, I'll put the link again, um, is the, you know, all the products that I use from them. That is also really helpful for me to keep my hormones balanced. Um, I know my previous OB, um, who's a functional medicine OB, I'm not with her anymore, obviously, but um, if she had put me on um, something called feminescence, which is, uh, they have a perimenopausal one and a postmenopausal one, but it's a really strong maca root, and that's supposed to help balance your hormones. But, and I know that's what your question, that was not your question. These are just things that I've used, um, but really you should be off of all of these things if you're trying to get a good indicator of your own hormone level um, because all of these things even ashwagandha even maca they can all throw off your levels um, for your hormonal testing so um, i know that in the functional medicine world they use chest berry a lot too to help balance progesterone and things like that um, so there's a variety of supplements if you're taking any of those you might not get a clear picture um, as to what your hormone levels are but again, you have to be off of everything at least for three months to get a clear picture of your own hormone levels. Um, but that's it. Those are the only three questions we had for today. So this is a pretty short session. Um, I will post again this Friday. So please, please, you know, ask your questions on there and, um, you know, let us know what your questions or concerns are. And hopefully we can keep everybody in the loop and learning and, you know, educational sessions together to really help each other out. Um, and otherwise, I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.